Hello, I'm Colin McNulty. I'm the Director of Global Support at Astronomer. And I'm Ryan Hatter. I'm on the support uh, engineering team at Astronomer as well. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about, obviously, airflow beyond data engineering. Uh, but before uh, we kind of dive into things, I want to hearken back to uh, the presentation that I gave at Airflow Summit uh, a couple of years ago. Um, and that was uh, during the strangest time of probably all of our lives. And I presented virtually. It's nice to be here in person. Um, that talk was about overcoming imposter syndrome to become a contributor to Airflow. Um, and I've come a long way, but sometimes I still feel like a bit of a, an imposter, surrounded by folks like Boz, uh, Jed, Caxel, Daniel Standish. Uh, there are so many. Um, but you know, I've come a long way, and in a lot of ways, uh, I think I am a bit of an expert now. Uh, and the fact that I can say this is a testament to you know, the graciousness and kindness of the entire Airflow community. So thank you. Um, so yeah, we're going to talk about uh, you know, some unconventional use cases for Airflow. Uh, and in my opinion, they really shouldn't be uh, unconventional. Um, and we'll touch on uh, how the support team at Astronomer uses Airflow in you know, such an unconventional way. So to start with, uh, can we get everyone to raise your hand if you are an actual user of Airflow? Not just a contributor, but you actually use it. Okay, now please keep your hand up if you use it for something data engineering related, ETL, ML, something in that milieu. Okay, so most of the people who had their hand up originally. So I want you guys to consider for a second this humble bowl, okay? Good for lots of stuff. Salads, big bowl of popcorn. This one's kind of comically large, but great for ice cream. All kinds of stuff, right? So imagine if I went and talked to everyone I talked to about bowls, they were like, oh yeah, good for salads. Oh yeah, salads, right? Those are the things for salads. You'd feel like a crazy person, right? Because it's such a versatile tool to pigeonhole it into this one thing that it's really good at would seem unusual. And it's our opinion that Airflow is uh, similarly uh, pigeonholed. So what is Airflow? So this is from the Airflow readme. This is actually the first line. Uh, and I'm going to read verbatim here, so bear with me. So Airflow is a platform to programmatically author, schedule, and monitor workflows. Uh, this is super important, so it bears repeating. Airflow is a platform to programmatically author, schedule, and monitor workflows. If you go to the readme, uh, and you command F or control F for ETL or data engineering, you won't find a single hit. Um, because Airflow isn't actually built to be just a data uh, orchestrator. It's not built just as a data engineering tool. Um, and so you know, there are a lot of unconventional ways that we will talk about using Airflow for. Sorry. So what? Um, so we, as, as the CRE team, uh, the customer support team at Astronomer, uh, we had the desire to be much more proactive for our team, uh, for our customers. Um, we wanted to be telling our customers about problems with their airflows and not have them telling us about the problem. And there's a bunch of problems that we can detect. They're just tedious. It just takes a little bit of automation to, uh, to, to break into. And so we wanted to look at some tools for uh, evaluating those kinds of problems. Uh, and so one of the tools that we, we found on, or we, we landed on, uh, it, it was a really good tool. Uh, I took it for uh, a test drive, and as soon as I started using the tool, uh, the gears kind of started turning. I started thinking of a lot of ways that we could kind of get in front of issues uh, before our, our customers experience them. Um, but you know, there was a bit of a learning curve, and it was very batch-oriented. And of course, as Airflow practitioners, uh, you know, we're a lot better at, at Python. Um, so I said to Colin, I was like, hey, uh, you know, this is a great tool. I'll support it if we move forward with it. Um, but you know, I think we could build this ourselves. Uh, and ever inquisitive, Colin said, OK, how? Um, so I launched into kind of this half-baked idea of using um, AWS Lambda functions to uh, trigger pager duty notifications when something's wrong or you know, notify us on Slack. Um, and I said, this should run on you know, some kind of schedule. And when I said schedule, Colin starts thinking, why not just build this in the best scheduler, uh, on the best scheduler that's available, which is obviously Airflow. Um, and with that, the uh, Airflow support team, uh, you know, the, the, we, the wheels started turning, and we started opera off to the races. Um, and so we're building a tool that eventually became known as Airline. 
Um, and this tool uh, basically monitors the health of our customers' environments, uh, checking whether or not things are, are running smoothly. Um, and if something is going poorly, uh, it will send, uh, it will interact with the Zendesk API uh, to raise a support ticket uh, so that our support engineering team um, can, you know, get a jump start and uh, hopefully, ideally, uh, resolve the situation before our customers are even aware that anything was wrong. Um, so as a concrete example, uh, Air, uh, Astronomer has historically used something called a Canary DAG. And it's a really simple DAG. It's a single bash operator uh, that runs in all of our uh, customer environments. And if airline detects that you know, this DAG is unable to be scheduled, then clearly there's a problem. Uh, so it'll raise a high priority uh, Zendesk ticket, uh, which will in turn uh, page the uh, on-call engineer. Um, and it'll have you know, beautiful rendering of Markdown uh, with tons of, of information uh, so that you know, the engineer can uh, have, a, like I said, a big head start and, again, solve the problem, uh, hopefully before the customer even realizes uh, something is, is wrong. And so when we look at this, this example, and it is just an example of one of the many, many things you can do with Airflow, why is it different? Well, it's, it's really different because there's very little data processing. No one's winning any awards for what's going on in any of these tasks. Um, what's exceptional about it is simply that it happens really frequently. It's a really easily scheduled task. And so it's worth considering, you know, we have to evaluate ourselves. Are we just using Airflow because it's a tool we like, or is Airflow actually well suited to this? And we thought about it. We, we really considered that. And it's just, it, it came to us that Airflow has so many features built in about how to schedule things really reliably. It's got a great retry behavior, great uh, distribution and, and resilience. Um, and also, it's got great integrations with everything that you can think of. Uh, we integrate with PagerDuty, with Slack, with Zendesk. These are all just built-in uh, providers that exist, and they have nothing to do with data engineering. Uh, nevertheless, Airflow does a great job. Like, we don't think about the operation of Airflow, we think about what do we want to do with it? What should our DAG do? And honestly, we think that Airflow is just an amazing tool for anything that you want to do with a schedule. And there's a lot more that happens on a schedule in terms of the world and uh, business and just organizational operations than data engineering. So we don't want it to be pigeonholed. And so over the, a couple days ago, I asked uh, in you know, the astronomer Slack, um, what are some of the least ETL-y ways that you think of that you know, you, Airflow is, is used for? Um, and there were a lot of really great answers, which was kind of surprising. Um, but here are a few of them. Uh, so the astronomer open source Airflow team uses Airflow to uh, orchestrate GitHub Actions to supercharge their CI CD. Um, we also use for customer onboarding. So as soon as a, a new customer is, is signed up in Salesforce, uh, there will be various tasks completed, uh, like creating a, a, a customer-specific Slack channel to discuss customer-specific things. Um, and one of my favorites, uh, astronomer Julian Lenev, uses the uh, Astros Cloud IDE, which is built on top of uh, Airflow, to crawl New York City real estate uh, listings that fit his criteria. And once he was alerted of one, he toured it within the hour, and he was able to get his dream apartment. Um, and these are all great, but this is kind of setting up for the pinnacle of Airflow uh, achievement, which is using Airflow to schedule Christmas lights and Christmas music when the sun goes down. Um, and I think this is actually a really important point because you can trust Airflow to run at incredible scale doing business critical data engineering type tasks, and you can also do it for things you know, like this. Um, so it's, it's a super powerful tool, uh, and it should be used for more than just data. Um, and yeah, so tomorrow you can check out Mark Lamberti's talk on, the, uh, on getting Airflow certified, and you can find us in an hour or so. Uh, at the astronomer party at the Sheraton. So with that, we can open up for Q&A. Thanks. I would love to hear questions. And also, if you have used Airflow to schedule your Christmas slates, please tell us where we can see it. <laughs> questions? Yeah. Come over. I go. Um, one of the assumptions for Airflow DAX is that 
um, most of the workflows are item potent? Do you think that using Airflow to schedule things that are um, not item potent in nature would cause problems in general? So in general, yes, item potency is extremely important for Airflow um, because if you're, especially in like data engineering use cases, so if you want to retry some SQL query, you want to make sure that if you run it again, you're not going to corrupt your data. Um, but not everything really needs to be item potent. Um, and specifically in our airline use case, uh, there's not really any need at all for item potency. Um, so it really kind of depends on, on your specific use case. Uh, and in a situation where, uh, especially for, like I said, for data engineering, um, then yeah, it's super important, but not always. It's also worth comparing to your alternatives. Um, most of the alternative ways that we could have scheduled these things would also not have been item potent either. Um, so there are some things that are not going to be item potent by the nature of what you're trying to do, not by the nature of what scheduler you use to make it happen. Other questions? Do you think you have to be a bit careful about kind of ending up with the sort of the Facebook problem where you kind of you build all your internal tools on Facebook and then Facebook goes down and you can't release a Facebook update to fix the problem that you have? You know, if you end up like you're talking about where you're using Airflow to monitor Airflow, like can you do you have to be cognizant of the fact that you have to think you know, I don't want to make myself so reliant on these tools that if there's a problem with Airflow itself, I can't then fix it because I'm relying on Airflow and, you know, so on the loop goes. Yes. And we did have to consider how far down the rabbit hole we uh, wanted to go on our monitoring, our monitoring, our monitoring, our monitoring. Um, so in, in our use case, we have a, uh, a non-Airflow alarm for did our main monitoring Airflow deployment go down and that one monitors everything else. So that's how far we decided to go. <laughs> what are some challenges when you were building this airline tool? And how did you get a, across them? <laughs> how long you got? Um, <laughs> um, I would argue that the challenges weren't so much Airflow related. Um, yeah. in, in my opinion, we, uh, when, when we started out, we kind of over-engineered things a little bit. Um, but we got to a really good point, and now it runs really reliably. Um, if we could start from scratch, I think we would have done things maybe a little bit different. Um, but with that being said, uh, the challenges that we have faced are really not related to Airflow or, or Astro. Um, and in fact, using Airflow eliminated a whole class of challenges that we were staring down when we started the project. So um, it's all about writing good DAGs, and that's always a challenge anywhere. Other questions? Oh, awesome. In your talk description, you mentioned you leverage Kubernetes for, I'm guessing, some data processing or something. I'm trying to understand like what level of customer data you are accessing in order to make, enable this. and. Is it like machine learning based or is it rule based system? Like what's happening in the airline? Uh, it's, it's pretty simple rules. Um, you gave the example of the Canary DAG. We also monitor um, like the pod statuses of the underlying airflow components of customer airflow deployments. Um, so we, airline can see the logs the same way that we can, so it can detect, oh, this, this log message says something, like scheduler logs, um, something has gone wrong and we want to act upon that. Uh, and specifically regarding Kubernetes, so Astro is built on, on top of Kubernetes, uh, so we're able to see you know, how our Airflow deployments on top of Kubernetes are, are working. Uh, we're able to use Splunk to see Kubernetes event logs and things like that, and we, when we see something particularly problematic uh, in Splunk, for example, uh, with a Kubernetes resource, then we're able to, to take action on it. I think on the previous slide you said something like uh, Airflow is the best choice for scheduled workflows, but is there any reason it wouldn't be a good choice for like event-driven workflows? That's a good question. Um, not necessarily. Although I think it's a little bit more work today 
I think talks like, uh, if you saw Vikram's talk uh, a little bit around micro pipelines and extensions to the data sets interface might make it a better choice for event-driven workflows going forward. But that's definitely still, I mean, I've built event-driven workflows in Airflow before, and it, it works pretty well for that. Um, I think maybe, well, I guess yes. The short answer is yes. It's still good for event-driven workflows, um, and it's especially good for scheduled workflows today, in my opinion. Ryan, you feel differently? Okay, that covers it. Other hands? If not, let's give our speakers another round of applause. Thanks for coming out, y'all.